Right. Good morning, everybody. As you filter in, just letting people through to the main room. So good morning, good morning, good morning. We are kicking off the coaching summit with the wonderful Marianne, who is here this morning, and I'll hand over to her in just a short moment. It's wonderful to see so many of you joining live. We are going to be here across um, today, three till three o'clock, and also tomorrow. And then myself and Joe will be doing a masterclass on Wednesday about working with your emotions in coaching. So Thank you for joining us here. Now, Mary Ann is going to be leading us through an interactive session on her genius leadership model. She wants us to experience it. So we're going to get to work. So you're going to need some paper and pens. And Mary Ann is an executive leadership coach. So she does corporate coaching. She works with small and medium organizations. And she also Love does corporate I'm consultancy. Ready. Sorry, just muting people there. And um, she's going to lead us through a brilliant session. So, Mary, let me come off slides and hand over to you. Let's see if I can spotlight you. There we go. Hey, your beautiful face, right? My goodness, in full Technicolor glory on the hottest day of this century. Part of me is quite glad it is going to be here at nine o'clock, a little bit cooler than I think it's going to be for most of us here it's in the UK for the rest of the day. So welcome, welcome, welcome everyone. And what a gig I've got. I've got the kickoff to this incredible summit over the next three days. And as Zoe said, my name is Mary Smith. I'm an executive leadership coach, I'm a queen, keynote speaker, corporate consultant, I'm the creator of Genius Leadership, and I'm going to be your host for the next 45 minutes on this sun-filled Monday. Now, first of all, I want to just say thank you, thank you, thank you to both Zoe and to Joanne, who have created this beautiful gift of time for us all, and over the next three days, and I'm going to tell you, these days have never been experienced in the history of this planet, but we are going to be coming together to spend that, gosh, most precious gift of time, that infinite resource with one another. And this container of this summit is going to be incredible. Now, I want to invite you all, I can only see so many, I know that there are quite a few in this room, we've got up to 48, wow! But I can only see a few of you on the screen at the moment. Um, but I'm going to invite you just to put your hands up in the air because we're wanting to connect with one another. Who says that you can't feel each other's energy when you're on a Zoom? And let's raise our energy for the next 45 minutes. And do you know what you can do? The first thing you can do, we've moved our bodies. Let's all smile. It changes your physiology right away. Now I'm going to give you permission to take those hands down and bring your voice into the room. Get on the chat. I'm going to be asking you to be on on the chat quite a lot during this session but let's get your voice in the room first of all and I want you to share with me maybe what your industry is because I know we're going to have lots of people from lots of different places and let's just get a sense of who is in this space this morning and the second thing I want you to do is to put in a word of appreciation for Zoe and for Joanne for doing this creating this space, and for all of my fellow hosts who are coming in here to share their knowledge, skill, and competence with you for the next three days. I know that those words that you put up will be really valued and treasured by each and every one of them. Now, let me see if I can get my chat up so I can actually see things. So let me see that we type, type, type as we go. Now, we have only got 45 minutes. And this is an experiential session, as, jo as Zoe said, get your pens ready. Um, and I'm going to kick off. I'm going to kick off. So in the last 52 years, I can honestly say that I've lived an extraordinary life, supporting people to create purpose-driven lives and businesses. Now that's been 30 years of inspiration, a whole load of perspiration and an abundance of radical impact. How cool is that? But now I'm committed, committed to building more inclusive and representative, what I call workplaces of purpose and belonging. 
where powerful uniqueness of our individuality and our collective humanity can thrive. Is that not a big sentence for a Monday? That sounds like really serious stuff. It's heavy stuff. It really just means that they can be, it's about us all being able to really nurture our difference. My, my family were all brought up with me yakking on saying that family was our opportunity to be able to embrace the difference of one another. Way before DEI, diversity, inclusion were all the buzzwords. And it is our opportunity to be able to do that. Now, I'm also not going to share any background stuff with you because I only have 45 minutes and it's now 40 minutes. So we have LinkedIn for that. Hallelujah, LinkedIn. And at the end of this, I'm going to be putting up four slides and they'll have the QR code to be able to connect with me there. So if you want to find out more about me, all my stuff, then you can do that after this. But instead, I'm going to be giving you the chance in this next 45 minutes to let you see me, feel me, meet me, get to know me as deeply as you possibly can through this interactive workshop. Now, I'm here today to be sharing my philosophy of what I've called genius leadership. And it's been developed through the story of my life, really. So you're going to be exposed to stuff about me anyway, whether you like it or not. Um, I'll be here giving you all I have for the next six, uh, 45 minutes. It is an experiential workshop, so get your pens out. It won't have any slides except for four at the end because I don't want any barrier to our connection. Genius Leadership is all about you and we want to dive right into that right away. So what's my expectation of you? It's dead easy. Can this be a life-changing experience? Yes, it can, if you're open to receiving it and you're ready for it. I want you to put that intention out there and show up in the best way that you can for the next 40 minutes to get that result. Now, the universe gave us one mouth, two ears for a reason. So let's use them in proportion today and really supercharge your listening and activate your curiosity. And then also, in particular, I want to ask that you're open, open to allowing yourself to challenge your internal framework for what leadership currently looks and feels like to you. Challenge that internal framework and be committed and being willing to grow out your comfort zone and transcend your current state of being around leadership. So that is my big ask. Now imagine if you do that, just those few things for the next three days. The law of math, well, you have a much better chance of magic happening. So let's take a moment to connect with what may be a barrier in your world right now in this moment, today, and over the next three days, to being able to make this potentially um, an opportunity for radical shifts in you. You may already be aware, as I've been talking, of stories entering your head. It might be, don't like her, she's too noisy for a nine o'clock on a Monday. What were they thinking? Do you know, it might be, I don't know if I, I need to be here. I'd rather be going watching a bit of morning telly because I know loads about leadership. Whatever is going on in your head, just start to notice it this morning. Notice it, bring it into your consciousness, and I want you to start to write it down. What are the things in your head? It can be anything random. And you can see lots of glorious, glorious things being put into the chat already this morning. So get that pen and paper and to help you, because I'm going to be asking you lots of reflective questions right the way through, I call um, things a structure to take the strain. And I'm going to bring in a structure to take the strain of that reflection for you this morning. And I'm going to invite you to use what, I, what is known as Rolf's Reflective Framework. It's the simplest reflective framework on the planet. And all it is, is I want you to be thinking about what, so what, now what? What is Mary Ann saying? What has she just told me? 
then so what does it mean to me? So what am I learning? So what am I discovering because of what she said? And then now what do I need to do because of it? What, so what, now what? Write that down your paper and have that going through your head as you hear me talking this morning. Now, I know that this is recorded and I'm taking full advantage of that because you may definitely want to go back and actually replay it and stop and answer some of the questions. But for the purposes of today's slot, I'm just going to be putting the questions out there and trusting that you will do exactly what you need to do with it. You will take responsibility for what they are going to mean to you. So the lessons of genius leadership are going to be scattered all the way through this workshop. This isn't a didactic workshop. It isn't a case of you sit, listen, and then ask me questions. It's about us being in the space together, sharing, discovering together, and you taking action. It's really about you showing up as your best version of your genius leadership as you possibly can in this moment. So if we're ready to go, let's crack on and just notice the preparation that we have done coming into this space. Now, when we talk about genius leadership, um, the first thing we have to ask, well, actually what I should have said is the two things I'm gonna be doing in this workshop with you around the concept of genius leadership. It's really simple, two things, and both of them involve sixes. Um, the first is to be able to actually talk you through why we need genius leadership and why I started evolving it. And the second is to show you the six steps of the genius leadership framework. That's it. That is it. And in the process of doing that, you are going to be actually applying genius leadership and doing a lot of grounding and conscious connection with self about leadership during this workshop. So the first question we have before we dive into this morning about my six whys for genius leadership is why do we need it, right? I mean, there's thousands of books and courses on leadership and we've got Google, hallelujah, Google. We can just type in leadership and whoosh, the tsunami of it comes and hits us between the eyes. And anyway, everybody regurgitates the same stuff, right? Does any of those things resonate with you? The truth is that through one lens, all of those statements are absolutely right. But let me share six different lenses to let you understand where I found myself and why, despite all of that being true, I created genius leadership philosophy. So, the first why I created it is that despite all our best efforts, we haven't cracked the complex challenge that is leadership. Nice and easy. You haven't cracked it. So despite all of that, we still haven't just implemented it everywhere and everything's amazing. So I want you to reflect, get your pens out and reflect on your experience of leadership. What is just coming into your mind? What's your body feeling? What has worked for you? What hasn't? Why hasn't it? Or why has it? Um, and what does the word leadership actually stimulate in your mind? What does it mean to you right now? And do, if you want, you can use the chat, put up some ideas, because this is your chance to get your voice in the room. So that's number one. We haven't cracked it. So maybe we need something else. Number two is that we are all ah, beautifully unique. I mean, we have got now 59 people in this room and not one of us is identical to the other. How cool is that? It's also the reason leadership is complex. There is no one size fits all and there never will be. Get used to it, get over it and get on with it. Now, my job in a university back in the day when I worked as a lecturer and researcher was to take, this is hilarious, to take complex theory and make it contextually relevant. I always loved saying that because I felt so clever, do you know? Um, now, in a, in a short, simple way, it meant 
not delivering a Tupperware box and every, expecting everybody to fit inside it. Now, I want you just to reflect on those words um, and your leadership strategies that you've delivered or approaches that you've used or shared or maybe there's stuff there that you didn't have flexibility around, that you did find yourself delivering stuff or talking about stuff or being stuff that felt like you were being stuffed into a box and you're trying to stuff others into a box. It wasn't unique and flexible around the individual. And it's, by the way, this isn't to persecute yourself and hit yourself over the head with a bat. There's no bat hitting this morning. If you discover anything in this process this morning, the number one thing you have to show yourself is compassion and grace, because we are all doing our very best in any moment with what we have on our table. So that's number two. Number two is that we are all unique and we need a variety of things. Number three, about my whys for genius leadership, I say to coaching clients, you all and everybody in this room have a social responsibility to share your voice. As there are people on this earth who have been born, oh God, they wait here, only able to hear you. There are people on this earth born only able to hear your voice. They may listen to other people, but they will only be able to deeply, deeply hear and create impact if you step forward. And you stepping forward will allow them to step into a life led from their genius and their best self. Poof. Now, if we start to frame things like that, I want you to reflect on so far, say in the last year, let's limit it. In the last year, how have you been called to lead in the last year? How have you been showing up as a leader of yourself and others in the last year? And if you're saying, well, I'm not really a leader because of this and I don't have a team or anything. How have you been leading yourself? Do you even know what that actually means? What strengths in your leadership have there been? How have you been sharing your knowledge, skill and competence? What do you need to do more of? And what are you no longer available for? Now, that bit of reflection, if you're watching on replay, stop and really dig into that. And a powerful um, part of that is, what is your real strength in there? What do you need to do more of? And what are you no longer available for? So social responsibility to get your voice out is number three. Number four, I spent years designing and delivering leadership programs for large corporate organizations. Describing leadership as a complex challenge. And guess what? I delivered complex solutions. Did they work? Well, everybody clapped. People said they felt transformed as they left the room. They told me, Marianne, you are fabulous. You're fabulous. I'm wanting me to come and coach them. I have to get you into my team. My ego was loving it, baby. It was just loving it, the whole thing. But did it work? The truth was that it never really created transformation with a capital T. The impact in the long, well, actually medium, and even short term, forget about long term, was that it was limited to a few individuals who really did shine. But even they went back and were describing working in environments that were toxic bullying, stressful, experience burnout. So on one hand, there's a lot of disconnect there, isn't there? Because if they are truly showing up as leaders, but then they're choosing to be environments that are doing this, there's real disconnect there. And despite all of my intelligence, and I was born pretty super smart, um, and I never used to be able to say that either. I never used to be able to harness that and just put it out there. Despite my intelligence and despite all of my experience working with international leaders, change makers and world renowned theorists, I mean, how super cool. There was no capital T in the transformation and the leadership programs that I, I designed and delivered. And there was only 
teeny tiny T transformation. T, 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 teeny tiny T transformation. Guess who ended up frustrated, burnt out and stressed? Moi. And there is the cycle. So I want you just to, having heard that bit of my story, reflect on what your experiences have been as a leader, what big T's, what teeny tiny transformation T's have you had and why? What models, tools, approaches have you used? And remember, this is a vulnerable exercise I'm asking you all to launch into. How many people have we got so far? 59 people holding this in here today. It's a vulnerable exercise, so show yourself compassion and grace. Compassion and grace. Now, number five, I know that two of my values, right, are simplicity and deep connection. But back then, I didn't. I even remember a time, every time somebody asked me, what's your values? I had to go and look up what values were. I mean, that is mad, 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 mad. And the truth is that most people who come to work with me to expand and discover and step into their genius leadership actually don't really know what their values are either. And not knowing and living my values meant that I was struggling to be leading myself. I ended up down other people's rabbit holes the entire time. It's like no wonder I was feeling disconnect and disruption inside me. So. All of that in mind, it's no wonder I wasn't being very effective in my leadership efforts. I was delivering, in fact, and this is a big bit, complex intellectualized solutions that had limited deep connection to self and others. I was delivering stuff out here. And even though I'd throw in about a, a bit of deep work in the session, it was a drop in the ocean and there was not enough follow-up for anything to embed. Think about for anybody who's done internal work, was it a one-hit wonder that created the impact? Uh-uh. That's the tough stuff. That is the tough stuff. I was using strategies that I call fed my 25%. Now, I'm going to share what that is. Do you know that 25% of your intelligence is held in your head? All that thinking I was doing, all that intellectualization. I was doing tons of reading. And this head of mine was like a giant washing machine. It doesn't matter how much I stuff in it. It doesn't get more than 25%. The rest of my intelligence is below my neck. It's in my body. And just in those words, just think about how much are you intellectualizing everything? And how much are you really pushing down and using the whole intelligence of your body and being attached to your values? We can often intellectualize it. You can say, oh yeah, I know them. I know them. I can rattle them all off. I can tell you what they look like. But then you're stressed, you're burned out. You're putting yourself in toxic environments. You aren't living them. You're living in the 25% of your intelligence and not in the fullness of the 100% including the body. So I want you to reflect now on those words. What are your core values? How well do you know and live them? And I want you to score yourself out of 10. Now 10 is being, let's see what, is, what the low end is. If you say to me, yeah, mary I do know them. They are, well, there's trust, the respect. Um, oh, what else? See, if you're questioning them, you don't know them. 10 out of 10 is when you go deep connection, simplicity, freedom, diversity. And I'm going to tell you what they look like in my life. Boom, 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 boom. That's when you are living them when you can feel somebody's energy around them. So just give yourself a wee score out of 10. And remember, no bash in your head, compassion and grace. And if you're brave enough, oh, Dan, you put up a seven. That is fabulous in the chat. And whatever number you have, just connect to how you can maybe notch it up to an eight. Take it from a three to a four. Because that insight alone is so, so powerful and really connect to what is the impact for you for it not being 10. I lived 
if we take it from 20 plus, right, because before 20, my head was a mushroom anyway, um, but for what, 20 years at least, I wasn't living aligned and breathing and bringing the energy of my values and I, and I struggled, totally struggled. So that is number five. Number six, wow, we're at the last one of the whys. My first degree was in occupational therapy and I'm still a state registered therapist. And it is effectively like having a degree in purpose. How cool is that? I don't just talk about it. Hey, I've got a degree in it. In 32 years, back then as a therapist, I was supporting people with often complex and enduring conditions to engage in purposeful activity. I went on to teach in universities, but fast forward into now, I support people to build purpose-driven lives and businesses, a gorgeous golden thread, despite all the ups and downs in that life. And it just proves, all the theory around that proves that we as a race, as human beings have an inherent need for work. And because we do, business, <laughs> is the most beautiful structure of potentiality that allows the powerful uniqueness of each individual to thrive and create an impactful collective that can change our world. If you set up a business structure, right? Wow, people collect into business structures because they have an inherent need for purposeful work. Now that sounds fabulous doesn't it? And that's the good news. But you know, see, with every bit of good news, yep, I'm going to tell you the bad news. <laughs> and the bad news for me was that in our culture, we do not design business with the human system in mind. <sighs> well, that put water on my fire there, didn't it? It instead focuses on external drivers like money, results, and power. And therefore, we don't see leadership as a must have. It's viewed and funded as a nice to have, and certainly not as a non negotiable. Every single organization I had worked for had been built with a lack of focus on the human experience. And because of that, it embraced overworking. And when you're overworking, you ain't got space to craft a different system. And guess what happens? Nothing changes. Everybody burns out, everybody's bitching behind each other's back. There's toxic behaviors. And I'm not saying there's pockets of magnificence in there, but even that magnificence gets worn down. And I say that from all experience, people were clapping and my heart gradually just was aching, absolutely aching. And what those organizations do that aren't built on human experience is that they end up creating tiny pockets of people, they give them jobs, they're usually called L&D, OD, HR, it all comes under that. I was in that um, tiny pocket of people whose job is, not purpose, to deliver transformational you know, leadership change and do it fast, but with a huge lack of resources, because remember, it's not a non-negotiable in this container. And there's no gentle learning. There's no learning how to hold uncertainty in an emerging future to be able to make the change, which will take time because the environment hasn't been set up with the human experience in mind. And these poor people end up disillusioned, burnt out because there's such emotional and intellectual disconnect chucked at them constantly. And they end up being not in a place to inspire and create and cause impact. I certainly wasn't, no matter how hard I tried. And they end up actually either leaving the container and going to another container, usually to do the same poop in a different place. <laughs> I moved a lot doing the same poop in a different place. Um, or they stay and deliver a minimum viable product. 
And at the end of my corporate time, I was showing up delivering a minimum viable product. And um, because everybody else was tired, nobody really noticed. Um, so I want you just to reflect on that good and bad scenario that I have just described and just connect with any similarities or differences in that story there may be for you. And remember, it's a summary of it. There's some amazing stuff, but connect with it. So that is my six whys of genius leadership. We haven't cracked the leadership challenge. We are all unique and need lots of options. We have a social responsibility because people out there need to hear your voice. I had enough of triple T's, tiny, teeny transformations. People aren't doing the same, um, um, people aren't doing, um, oh gosh, I've just lost my thought, um, I don't, aren't connected to their values and they're not using their whole body. They're using this 25% of intelligence, like a washing machine. It's intellectualizing information and pushing it out. And businesses aren't designed with a human experience in mind. And I wanted to change that. So now that you've got the six whys, um, and you've started to reflect on what they mean to you. I want you to pop in the chat one key thing that came up for you. And I'm just going to keep going, but I've got the chat active there. So what is one key thing that's come up for you so far? And Zoe, if there's anything really juicy that comes up, you can just interrupt me and tell me. So we've done the six whys of why I created it. So what is genius leadership philosophy? Well, knowing all of that, I created Genius Leadership Philosophy as a simple structure to take the strain of the complexity of the leadership dilemma. A simple structure that can flex to the needs of every individual and organization. Even on the most basic level, it can create impactful systemic change that everyone can understand and feel that they have a sense of belonging that allows everyone to recognize themselves as a leader. It's a philosophy people can carry in their heads, like a toolbox in their mind. You can be developing in different ways at different levels in each of the six components of the genius leadership philosophy. And it underpins everything that you do. Where there are people, there should be the six genius principles built into the foundations to support them. And today I want you to take that philosophy framework away and let's see what ripple effect and you will all be at different levels there. Now, at the half... Sorry, Mary, I was oh, just going to share oh. with you some things you've got in the chat. So um, lots of people resonating with what you've said. So a lot of people say you've described every corporate I've ever worked in. <laughs> <laughs> really need to spend some time on my values. Uh, Dan really liked the social responsibility to share my voice. I thought that was really well put. I, I enjoyed hearing about that one too. Compassion and grace and being kind to yourself really resonated with Amy. Love that. We have an inherent need for purpose, yet businesses are not designed with the human purpose in mind. And Katie agreeing that that hit her really hard as well. Love so, yeah, lots of people kind of hearing your message this morning, which is great. Oh. Yeah, absolutely. And we have lots of shared experience in that room. So let's harness it. Let's feel it. We have shared experience. Hands up. I'm just let's feel it just for a moment. And if that wee story's going, oh, she's getting a bit woo now, isn't she? <laughs> I want you to fight it because I would have said that a decade ago as well. I would have said that. So at the heart of genius leadership um, philosophy is an inside out approach. All that we have done, I could have come in here and just told you straight up what it was, but that was an outside-in approach. Why would I do that? We have been working on you so far this morning. It always starts, leadership of others always starts off leadership of self. And that's why today you've been reflecting on you using my story in this workshop as a structure to take the strain. And I haven't even told you the best stuff yet. So Let's kick into that. If you're first of all wondering, right, she's been talking about genius leadership. What is genius? Well, the good news is you were all born with it. 
hey, it doesn't matter who we are, we're all born with it. And it's not an intellectual thing or intelligent tag, as our cultures often associate with that word. It's your unique being that you were born to this earth with. God, I'm saying some deep stuff this morning. And the hope that you would transcend it before you leave. So that means you were born with it. But this life is about pushing the boundaries and expanding it. And it's your internal fingerprint that the, no matter how you transcend, guess what? This is really cool. It stays unique to you. You will always be unique, no matter what you do. Now, I believe for years I had connected with my genius. After all, I'd done cool things. I had, a, now remember, I've got a degree in purpose. How clever am I? Check me. But I was intellectualizing everything. I'd maybe go on a, a retreat or something or a, a deep course, and I would have this flash of my genius would come through. Like it's, it, and it was that course that had cracked open all the barriers I had put up in my lifetime to getting through to it. And it would momentarily shine, but it was like something, a Marvel comic, to you know that Superman has no control over the light and it would cause me disruption. I'd end up greeting on the course and everything. But don't you worry, my 25% washing machine would come in, zoom in joyfully to shut that baby down and keep me safe. And that's what would happen. And I'd get disappointed because maybe a week after that amazing experience, everything was back to normal again. Genius leadership philosophy allows you to use your whole system to consistently connect with your unique genius and allows you to understand how to implement it and develop it in your life and with others. That's the powerful bit. And that's why it underpins all of my coaching, team development, diversity inclusion work, you know, speaking, breathing, marriage, kids, relationships, everything. So now I know you're all super excited and you're going, but Marianne, just tell me what it is. Tell me what it is in the last 10 minutes, please. So I will. So genius, first of all, wasn't a term I created and tried to work out the meaning. So it, it actually didn't happen outside in. It happened inside out because I noticed what I was talking about, and I'm telling you the process was torturous, and Zoe actually knows this. She was part of it coming to its fore. Um, but I noticed that together, what I was talking about kind of spelled out genius. In the beginning, I have to admit, I had two E's because I couldn't decide between expand and empower, but you're going to find out which one won. So let's talk about the six elements. Number one, ground. So the G is for ground. And you have been doing that since the moment we came in today. It is about getting super present, clarity of your reality, because that allows is the first step of change. If you got lost on your way to my house for dinner and you phoned me up and said, mary I'm lost. How do I get to your house? What, put in the chat what you think. The first question I would ask you, who's going to put that in the chat for you, for me? Come on, who's going to be first? Exactly, Julie, you get the prize. Where are you now? We have to know where we are now and grounding does that and you have started some of that. And we have just on a macro level today started to go into that process. So the first bit is ground. It allows you to push beyond the fake news, the fake story, the, you know, the, the deceptive perception of truth that you're holding to be able to understand where you are. Now, the next one was expand, was it empower? Expand one, it is expand. The E in genius is expand. And it means that now that you know where you are, we need to get you open to new realities so you can expand and empower new realities to change. And all I want you to do in this tiny moment is pop your hand on your heart, the moment you do that, it's super cool, it's called heart math, it immediately releases oxytocin. Your bodies are so clever. Your wee happy hormone will come out the moment you do this. And I just want you to breathe in and think to yourself, when I think of leadership, what does my heart desire? What does my heart desire? Start to get an idea of the experience 
expansion that you want. Not out there, but you want. So it's all about expansion. The N is for, I love this, nurture. I really wasn't sure whether to call it nourish because I love both the words, but this is about nurture. If our bodies aren't prioritized and nurtured, it will significantly impact our performance and potentiality for growth fact. But as business and career overachievers, which I am going to put a whole load of money that there's a ton of you at exactly that, this is usually the first place we sacrifice. No enough sleep, totally stressed, no enough water, eating crap, not giving yourself space, no, not enough movement. So in this part, I want you to reflect on, now that you've had some discoveries getting to this point in this workshop, I want you to think about what part your body will play in realizing them. Realizing if you've thought about things you want to do now, what part will your body play? And what part has your body been playing on you not being able to show up and leading self? What does your body need to make all of this happen now? Get connected with that. The next we have identity, our highest form of being. And we've been reflecting and challenging that and your identity as leaders through this workshop already and starting to get super clear on your inside rather than outside. As we you know, challenge some of those external stories, get connected to your values is one thing that we put in there. Now, I know that values is massive. I think we've got Ian, we've got Vicky, we've got Anasia. I think we've got, I was putting, coming a loop, yeah. They are all talking about values during this summit. So that is how important. So tune in there and see what they've got to say. See what they've got to say. But I want you to just now for identity to think about how you want to be seen as a leader of self and others. How do you want to be visible as a leader? How would others describe you when they see you as a leader? What would you be doing, feeling if you stepped wholly in your genius leadership space and lived from there. Now you, what is that? That is unleash. This is when you take everything. Once you've done all of that work and this cracked open all of your genius and not just connected with it, but understand how to implement it, it's how you take that out into the external what noise of the world. And guess what? You're going to join me and make it contextually relevant to you. Now is when you're really going to step into the fullness of your potentiality, of your unique genius leadership. It's when you'll explore everything out there, the tools, strategies, processes, frameworks, opinions, commands, models that are all around you. And guess what you're going to do? You are going to know how to craft them to be contextually relevant to you. No more sacrifice, no more compromise here, now, today. Here, now, today. And the last one, what we're we going to finish on. <laughs> I feel like I should be singing by this point. You know, there must be a song about this somewhere. The next last one is shine. How do you shine? This is where you can really influence and impact others. But the reality is, see if you haven't been attending to all the other bits, this bit's going to be a bit naff. It really is. I lived in naffness for ages and I had no idea. So just for today, because we're limited in time, what three actions are you going to, to commit to from this workshop? Because you've been using what, so what, now what? What are you going to commit to that will give you the biggest impact on the development of your self-leadership so that you can go out and have a bigger impact on others? If you're showing up for you, you have more capacity to show up for others. And that's it. Boof. Ground, expand, nurture, identity, unleash, shine, repeat, repeat, repeat. Have that framework in your head. Let it be your structure to take the strain of the potentiality of your genius leadership becoming a reality. Use it like an empty wardrobe, believe in today. Start noticing what you already know and start hanging things up in there. Now, I did promise you I was going to end on just a couple of slides. So while I'm getting this up onto the screen, I want you to 
just pop into the chat words that describe the experience that you have just had and what you will be taking away with you today. Thank you, Mary. If I can challenge you to pick one of your slides, just because we do have to finish um, sort of oh, in the right. next minute to get ready for the next session. But that was amazing. Thank you for bringing the energy and talking us through your model. I can see from the chat people have got a lot about it. And uh, people asking for the replay as well, so they can go back and take a pause and do some more reflecting. Um, yeah. Now, can I just check, so actually, that you can see that, Zoe? Yeah. We yeah. Can, yeah. Fabulous. So that is for you. You just need to get your phone out. If you really want to know more about my stuff, then you can just find me on LinkedIn and you'll be able to get that easy peasy lemon squeezy there. Um, it is that easy for there. You can also find me in my Genius Leadership Business Lounge membership in Facebook. And it's open. It's open. And I've got a special for anybody from this. I've called it the Genius Crowd and dedication of Zoe and Joe. And if you put hashtag Genius Crowd in a little message to me, you will be able to get into that lounge for a whole month for nothing just to see how it is. And we also can work with me. I do lovely retreats. And there you are. You can connect with me. And if you really want, you can get me on Moment Radio every Monday morning, 8 to 10. And I'll even play your tune to cheer you up. You know, so, Mary, when you, uh, when you opened up the start, I could hear your radio voice uh, <laughs> greeting us from the sides of the screen. So that uh, was absolutely fantastic. And thank you to all of you who have joined. I know there are many of you coming in uh, throughout the session, so you will be able to catch up on replay. Keep your eyes on the emails. We will send those over to you. Um, and what a brilliant start. So thank you very, very much. Next up, we have Barry and Joss, who are talking about what organisations want from coaching. So I'm going to end this call now so we can get ready for the next one. And I'll see you there. Thanks so much, Mary. And thanks to all of you for joining. Take care, everyone.